welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, we are talking turkey. We've got wild turkey, wild turkey, and more wild turkey we are going to talk about and discuss. And uh, Tim is turning the bottle on the table, making all kinds of noise. He just doesn't know how to pick a bottle up yet. <laughs> it's during the intro. I'm just going to walk over and just turn the bottle. Good Lord, you cannot take this man anywhere. This is why we cannot have nice things. Tim, Tim, Tim is just just twisting away. There you go. Pick up the baby bottle. There you go. Maybe you can't make enough noise of that one. I mean, he makes that thudding sound. I bet a lot. All right. Anyway, we we've got uh, Mr. Tim with us. We Thankful got to be here, Mr. Brock. Hello. And we got Carl in the house, and and and, and we have adjunct Jared. So Jared's in the house, but he's going to be uh, talking from afar. We we've only got four mics today. Like like a hair in a biscuit, right? <laughs> no Facebook calling. That's right. Yeah. No, drunk, no drunk dialing. That's what, drunk dialing Jared. That's what we're going to start calling him. There's the name. DDJ. DDJ. <laughs> drunk, drunk dialing Jared. There's a story behind that. We'll get to it. <laughs> Something I'm thankful for. <laughs> so since we're talking about wild turkey and Thanksgiving, and, and, and turkey is synonymous with Thanksgiving, right? Like Absolutely, you can't, yes. You can't have Thanksgiving without turkey. So we decided we were going to drink some wild turkey. We're going to we're going to talk a little bit about what we're drinking, but we're more or less just going to talk about what we're thinking about, thankful about, whether it's bourbon, what we love about bourbon, um, what we love, you know, about the fellowship of this group, and you know, all that type of stuff. We're, we're going to talk about those things. But uh, we've got five bottles, and I'm going to let uh, Carl take the lead. What, what what are we sipping on, brother? So we, the first one we're going with is uh, the Kentucky Spirit, a uh, 101. Then we got the, is that a single barrel store pick. Uh, no, it's just a single. Just a single bar? All did right. not find a store pick. Uh, then you have the Wild Turkey Master's Keep um, 1, which is also at 101. Then we have the second batch of Rare Breed ever from uh, 92 at 110. 1992, really? Yeah. it's the, uh, older than Jared. And the, this is like a mini sample. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a mini I drove an hour to go grab. That was a good year. Four years, right. four years old, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I was three. 1992. I was a freshman in I was a freshman in high school in 92. Yeah. He's from nice. I, I was already tapping ass by then. Four four years <laughs> old and still in a diaper, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was in a glimmer in his daddy's eye. Um, then you got the rare breed barrel proof from 2014. That's uh, 112.8. Then you have the is it batch one? Batch one. Batch one Russell's 13 year at 114.8. Batch one Russell's reserve 13. Gotta love the Russell's thirteen. So, so what's the year of that second rare breed you had? Uh the second one's uh, two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. So it's slightly the old label. getting yeah. it d- no, dusty. Absolutely. Yeah, it's slightly dusty. It was the old tra- old traditional uh, bottle though. Yes. Um, after they went away from the original model, then it goes to that one. Uh, that actually came from my dad's collection. So Ooh. I'm thankful for him buying that. Thankful for your thankful for your dad. I, I love that. I love that. And we're thankful it wasn't from his magazine collection. <laughs> I did not want to go there. I was going to say something horrible, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone. So anyway, Kentucky Spirit. So I've always been a massive K Spirit guy. Like it, it's one of those things that you know when I think of wild turkey, there are three things that come to mind. Russell's Reserve, the single barrel, barrel strength, you know, the ones that are 110, they hit like a brick. I love them. They're very consistent, whether they're a store pick or what they let out on their own. Kentucky Spirit. And then uh, I really, really love Rare Breed. And, 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 oh, since, rare the, and a- since the Rare Breed Rise came out, like, I'm just like, oh, like, now I can't even decide if I'll do Rare Breed or Rare Breed Rye. Like, it's just one of those things. So That's a tough one on those. Yeah. And and, really and and and, and you, you've kind of become the turkey guy of the group, right? Because Josh uh, used to be a turkey guy. Then we got him on Ovo. Now he's Ovo fanboy. And, and now we got you on the turkey. And yeah. you're always talking about something on the turkey side. What's funny is listening to the, this podcast and listening to Josh as much as he loved Wild Turkey at the time, that's what actually got me to start trying in. it and drinking yeah. it. That's funny. Huh. So we, we owe, we owe the, a debt of gratitude to Mr. Josh to... Uh, to, for your love of the old turkey. Because I believe he was the one that had the 13-year uh, wild turkey a couple of well, talk turkeys ago. Yeah. And I asked him how to find one. And yeah, we skipped talking turkey last year. So this is the, the second episode of yeah. talking turkey. And, you know. By, second well, annual. Second. Second. Yeah. I guess it could be second annual. It's not the second time. It's the second time we've done it, but it's we had a skipped a year. So I guess bi-annual. it's the, the biannual. But yeah, well, I, 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 I hope to do it every year. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it back next year. 
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So is it just me or I don't get the front. I don't get the back. I just get middle. Middle on yeah, this Kentucky more, Spirit? Yeah. So yeah, it, to me, yes. Th- a lot of these, and I haven't drank this one yet. Actually, I'm, I've been too busy, you know, talking about, <laughs> you know, what turkey is and all that type of stuff. But but yeah, to me, Kentucky Spirit has a whole lot of mid-palate. Like, and sometimes because it's only being 101, there's not a huge finish on them. No, so. but it's, it's very uh, like a caramel. This is actually my first time ever having the Kentucky Spirit. I, I will, uh, that, I'll second that. This is actually my first time having the Kentucky Spirit as well. I've had Rare Breed, and I've had, you know, Rus- various Russell's picks. But this is the first time that having a, the Kentucky Spirit. So when I think of Kentucky Spirit, I don't necessarily think of caramel. I think more of uh, your adjunct sweetnesses. Like sometimes I'll get some maple. Sometimes I get some toffee. Sometimes oh yeah, I, I get, get I get that. You know, I get things like that. On this one in particularly, I'm more in that toffee, like marshmallowy, that 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 subtle sweetness that's in there and kind of hits. It's kind of like the the as you said the adjunct, the one that that comes from known things, toffee. Uh, caramel, right. maple, you know, the not st- straight sweetness like, you know, brown sugar. Right. It's definitely sweet. That's yep. sweet on the mid palate. But they're high corn too. I mean, but most of these are what, eight, nine years old? Uh, Is that one got an age statement on it? I think most of them have an age statement of some sort. Mm. Nope. Okay. No, I, I, you know, I get that little, I, I get the, I don't really get a, much of a Kentucky hug with it, but I get kind of like a little tingle in the mouth. It doesn't you really know. drink the 101 proof, it more the 90 or so. Yeah, I mean. no, I agree with that. It was like 90, 92, 93. And so I'm very there. thankful for uh, Jimmy and Eddie Russell. For oh, absolutely. Wild turkey. 100%, you know. I, I'd be honest with you, the only miss, the only miss I've ever seen from wild turkey has been Long Branch. Yeah, that I want to buy a bottle just for the display, but... I do not care for the flavor palette. Of- I've tried it a few different times. I've, I've, I've tried it on an empty palette after I've had a bunch of other stuff to drink, other things like that. Like, to dissing- me, that is the one miss that they've had. Are you dissing Matthew McConaughey? No, not at all. I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, honestly, I, I, I had high hopes for it because I know McC- McConaughey likes bourbon. Like he's, you know, that rugged Texas guy, you know, that type of thing. And he, he supposedly, you know, was a big, big bourbon drinker. But I, to me, that, that one just kind of misses it. It reminds me too much of Basil Hayden. Like it's such a, like a light, light rye. Um, there's like a weird, like mid palate on it. I just, it, it just wasn't, it's the only one of the turkeys that I've ever, that I say that they kind of missed on in my, in my humble opinion. That's interesting. I would have took McConaughey as like one of those foo foo, uh, you think so? Spritzer no. drinkers or something no. like that. No. <laughs> no. So what's the price point on this? Uh, I actually paid, it was sixty four ninety nine plus tax. Yeah. So this, this would be a good, you had a hard day and you just want to get, you just want to. Yeah, you know, oh, feel yeah. feel the effects of bourbon. Yeah, absolutely. I, it goes down. Good. It's super yeah. smooth, super sweet. I just wish they would have kept their original bottle for Kentucky Spirit. Yeah, the old the old turkey, the turkey tail. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now what I find interesting is that's about the same price point as uh, the real rare breed barrel rare strength. Breed rye. Yep. No, uh, the barrel strength. Yeah, any of the rare breeds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can find the regular rare breed a little. See, cheaper and i i found the kentucky spirits is in the 50s typically like okay. the mid 50s 55 to 59 50 50 i mean 55 to 57 sometimes 59 i've not seen them 60 so but i find them more in that 50 something range and i find most of the rare breeds are probably high 50s or low 60s and i didn't go over across the river right to one of the big stores this came from a little local store so so that brings up thankfulness so it's i'm very thankful to be able to drink bourbon in the united states of america with you fine gentlemen. Yeah, I'm thankful yeah. for that too. The, the, the fellowship is one of my favorite things that I'm that I'm most thankful about for bourbon. You know, we, we we've met a lot of great people through this process, and I think we just recently had you know the the three year birth anniversary or anniversary, whatever we wanted to call birth it. Anniversary. Birth anniversary. Birth anniversary. I think I did an okay job spelling it. You um, did. That was <laughs> Bertha. 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 Anniversary. We, we probably should have done it like you were Bertha. Slurring. <laughs> Bertha anniversary. <laughs> Um, like Aunt Bertha. Um, yeah. but, but anyway, it, to me that that's what the bourbon's all about, right? You know, you, you, you have that fellowship and you get to meet and sit down and talk and, you know, whether it's a, a group of guys sitting around a table like this, or, you know, you're smoking a stogie around the fire and you're drinking bourbon, 
talking about your problems or the issues of the day, things like that. It's just, it, it's synonymous for that type of fun. So next, we, we're, we're, we're sipping on the old Master Keep. And this is uh, Master, Master Keep 1. Master Keep 1. Oh, God, look at you all fancy schmancy over here. Yeah, this is the, I believe, the toasted version, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Batch 1 toasted, yep. So this one is actually, I, I've had this one before then. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to dive back in on this one because it's been a hot minute since I've had it. But if I remember this one, this one's oddly got some 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 complex fruit notes to it in the mid palate. I haven't got that yet after the first pull, but I will say that it is eerily similar, and you guys can can disagree with me, but very close to the Elijah Craig Elijah Craig toasted. No first sip. Not to me. Uh, I'm still I'm still on the nose, but yeah, I, I get know. a lot of floral to it. Passion fruit. Passion fruit. Yes. Huh. I, 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 like I said, I remember there being something, some, some fruit, different fruit on the mid palate, but I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not taking a pull of yet. So I've never had a passion fruit, so I can't speak to that. Like a cherry or something to me. It's a, it's a very good pour. I mean, oh yeah. But now what are we looking on this? One on one. It's another one on one. Oh, uh, price uh, point, price point, price point uh, is uh, MSRP is right around basically about one eighty nine. One eighty nine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, this is, is that part hard of the yeah. We, and it's not that it's hard to find; it's not easy to find. It's very allocated. It's very allocated, but like because of the price point and it only being 101 proof, I, f- I found that they are probably of of what I would consider a highly allocated bottle. They're they're one of the easier ones to find. I would say this or the Cornerstone are probably yeah. the two yeah, the two easiest. Now, if you if you were trying to find a Wild Turkey 17 or uh, what's the other one called um, Unsomething, Unforgiven with the new one, is that the new one Unforgiven or something? No, like this that? Is, uh, the one I think is newer than that one. Uh, I don't know. There's there's a few of them that are out there, but the 17 is definitely the hardest. Yeah, I would say to find. So. Yeah, that that fruit flavor in the mid, like I said, it's almost like a stone fruit. Like, and I, and I can't figure, I can't really decipher which one it is. <laughs> Tim's giving me the weird look here. What stone fruit? Wait, so stone fruit it, is something with a pit. If he says he tastes cardamom in it, I'm no, leaving. <laughs> no, I don't get any card. I get there, there's very little baking spice at all. If there is any, um, it's it's a good pour. It's got a little bit. What what are you all looking at over there? Uh, it has the tasting notes on it. Oh, does it? Yeah, it's got a uh, rich vanilla, French oak. Toasted French oak, caramel, spice, and butterscotch. Butterscotch. I am. Not I can see the butterscotch. butterscotch. Yeah, I can see the. I see. see I get I the butterscotch. Know. I'm with him. I. I get that. Yeah, I, I get, get the get butterscotch. It. But so for me, I get a fruit, and like I said, it's a real mild, mild, mild fruit, like almost like a dark fruit, like one of those weird, like like maybe a plum or a fig or something. It's just in the mid palate, at the very, very back end of the palate, like where where almost right before you're finished, like the very, very back of your tongue. So your stone fruit may may be the pear. It could be, but but so a pear is not a stone fruit. That would be more of a excuse me. Or a peach, or, I, I guess I, probably. You could be like a, it would be, it would be like, so a pear would be so like it's a stone fruit without the stone. So exactly, it's a stone fruit. It's got tons of stones. It's a, <laughs> it's stony. It's got tons of little seeds. That's right. So a stone fruit would be like a peach, an apricot, a um, a cherry, a, a that, that, cherry. That's a what, that's plum. your way of saying that it's fertile. <laughs> yeah, Jerry coming in with avocado over here. Uh, so I guess technically, yes, an avocado would be a stone av- fruit. But avocado is not, not a fruit. It is a fruit. It's not a fruit. Yeah, it is. Says who? I mean, I think if you look it up, it says it's Google. Cr- it's creamy. Google Jared Google. It's, I, I, listen, <laughs> I, I, I agree with what you're saying that it, to me it doesn't taste like a fruit, but I think it actually is a fruit. I think it's considered a fruit because it grows on a tree in the way that it runs. You know, that's funny that you say that. Uh, if you've ever been down south, question: cashews. Do you understand what a cashew fruit is? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. The cashew it's a nut. nut right? Well, no, it is a nut, <laughs> but. Sorry. It is a nut that grows outside of the fruit. Right. Yes. And oh, yeah. And I remember you explained this in the last three podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Toby's not here for this one. Wow. <laughs> but you know what? As soon as you said that, that actually does kind of trigger it. That is kind of that almost cashew fruit-esque flavor. I know yeah. most of you guys probably have not had anything regarding that or close to that. Right. But it does, to, to me, taste like that. Yeah, Tim was saying passion fruit. And I was like, man, I just don't. But but honestly, I think passion. You, you lack is, passion it, in your is, life. I, I, do, I obviously do. I obviously do. So, but I don't know. Very good. I'm kind of so far impressed with the wild turkey products. All right, now rare breed, old school, 1992. This, oh, this is 92. This is batch two ever produced. 
So I, I will tell you right now, right off the bat, and, and I'm, I'm going to go full on on this one for the nose. Dude, this is like reminiscent of just crazy old school wild turkey. But man, this is, the, this the is nose dusty. has got dust. Yeah, that's oh, what this I'm is saying. definitely dusty. dusty. It's got a little bit of that dusty, like nice. What do you got, Jared? Some sort of like spices. Like- spices? Yes, yeah, spices and, and a lot spices. in the back. Yeah, so you already sipped it? Oh, God, I pounded it what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> well unfortunately we're not we're not getting any more of this anytime soon so um, i'm really trying to savor the just the nose on it alone yeah, i say um, thank you carl for bringing that this is very awesome yeah well i've been wanting to crack it with, for a good purpose and tonight seemed like a very good purpose so hey, the same thing with my kentucky one or the the wild turkey one not kentucky one <laughs> so yeah this is uh man it's such a such a different nose like, if so, you go back and just smell Wild Turkey 101 or any of the other ones, or even just today's rare breed, right? Yeah. The, like, this is so much different than the today's rare breed. Well, even, like, the 2014 rare breed that's just a couple points higher than this. Yeah, and it's the next one over, right? I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. nose that to you. Yeah, that's yeah no, four. you get to that. that yeah, smell dusty. the difference just in those two. And they're, and, and they're both what I would consider, one's a moderate dusty, right, at a 2014. It's eight years old, but. Yeah. But yeah, that ninety two is it is just different. It, it it hits different on that nose. So you you guys did did I ever bring the the wild turkey one hundred and one my nineteen ninety five bottle? You brought it for that's the it. These, but you have not. So I'll bring it over and let you guys try because I've got I don't I like Sharon's caring right, but uh that's that's what this nose is. Oh the yeah, more I said I can think so. about it, yeah that's it. This is it. Because weren't they still using the uh, teak teak wood instead of the uh, oh teak wood? Oh, it could have been. I don't. Know. I think at that point. I think it's so, like so, mid 90s. They so, how much over. 92 do you think's left out there in the market? <laughs> Probably not much. <laughs> about Especially the rare breed, because you got to think this is 110 proof. A lot of people weren't drinking higher than 101, I would say, back then when you agree, Scott. Yeah, I mean, m- most people back in those days were not drinking a whole lot of high proof bourbon. They probably had very limited runs on these two as well. Because um, I'm actually surprised that they even had minis. Of this, but look they, at how cool that bottle is. Just well, the cool bottle alone. I, I they looked, did minis up until the new bottle. No, I know, but I mean, yeah. at the time that was their high end product, right? Oh, yeah. So Rare Breed was like their barrel strength. It was their entry point into what they would consider oh, my a higher bad. end this bourbon. Ninety one. Ninety one. So that being said, that's it's late ninety one. So that's the big difference right there. Is that's the what they should be serving on the airplanes now. <laughs> I would yeah. be flying so much. <laughs> yeah, I'd fly a lot more if I could get You'd wild be turkey drunk on a plane. <laughs> Rare Breed. <Pretty> much. <laughs> I mean, so Rare Breed is one of those that, and I'll say I'm thankful for Rare Breed because it's one of the few bottles that's readily available. And I can tell you what, I can, I can blind Rare Breed up against almost any other semi barrel strength or barrel strength product. I don't care what it is. I don't care if I'm bringing out BTAC. I don't care if I'm bringing out anything else out there. Rare Breed will, will, will ride, ride up against any of those for the most part. They, they do just such a good job with blending these things. I'll agree with that. Oh, absolutely. I'm very thankful for uh, Corey, the guy that I actually gave this to me. So He gave it to you? Yeah, I drove all... Oh, that's right. You told me this story. I drove you drove him hour. to meet him for something else. No, I actually drove him just to meet Oh, to just to get that? I went oh. to pay him for it, what I thought it was worth. He's like, you drove an hour. Here, just have it. But later on, that led into my uh, 13-year and my uh, cornerstone that I have at my house that I traded for. So I'm very thankful for him. Excellent. Yeah. And Tobacco. a couple other uh, minis. Rah, I mean, just like this thing's got it's it's complex. It's nice. This is like the the late eighties, early nineties style bourbons that yeah, if you can find, are excellent. Grab I would them. love to find another one, like a big bottle of this. I haven't found that yet. What do you think the price point is on the now at that point? I know the early I think two, north of three hundred. I know the early two thousands are like two to two fifty. So yeah, I, so I, I bet can't it's north of three. I would say north of three, maybe four. Yeah, for one, that's of these. crazy. Just Sit be- back and think about it. So the next one is the 20, you said 2014, 2016. 2014. 2014 rare breed. Yes. It and is it's the, uh, what, 112 and some change? 112.8. So it's a, it's like the last Ooh. year that they uh, did this it's before they swapped over to the 116. Now that's got a little kick to it. Which is weird because I don't get much of a kick in the 116. No, the 116 is very. What do you mean the 116? The uh, modern. Oh, the modern day. The, the, the yeah. modern day one. Yeah. We're going through some rare I wonder what the age the age on these are. I think one of the most of the rare breeds are what eight to eight to ten years old. I would say so. Yes, it doesn't really say what age state or anything, but I would say no, on the nose I get the ethanol. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, I do. It, I, so it, yeah. it, it does have a little bit of an alcoholic nose for sure. Um, but there's also some weird sweet undertones there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 
And it's more of like your straight sweet, like a little bit of those sugary brown sugar. Um, like a caramelized sugar or something? Yeah, like a caramelized sugar for sure. Brown sugar, caramelized sugar. Very, very appealing to your nose. I I can't <laughs> describe it, but. After the hair's burned. It's, no, I, I, I do like it. And it's, it's got a very sweet taste to it in the mid palate. Um, and, and you don't get it that much tobacco. Which oh, is, that's delicious. No. Well, no, oh, the taste is, yeah. Oh, the taste is great. Yeah. yeah, this, yeah. It's got some caramel. It's got some, some, it's weird. It's uh, got some chocolate. It's got a little bit of, uh, it's got a slight citrus and that on your front palate. It's almost like a, like almost like a grapefruit. Fills up your mouth. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's got a nice of, lingering taste to it. Yeah, for sure. It's got a lot going on. Jared can't handle it. Jared. He said, fill your <laughs> mouth up. And Jared started laughing. He lost his mind. No. One th- one question that I have that I've always kind of wanted to bring up was is that over the past like, like three four or five years, right? Many of the distilleries have gotten a commonplace taste that you can distinguish: Wild Turkey, Heaven Hill, Beam, you know, all those. Right. Whenever we start going back to these dusties that are more than ten, fifteen, twenty years old, right? You, I don't think you can distinguish them as much as you can today. No, and but I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that a water quality was so it was much more unpredictable back then. Today, everybody's re- reverse osmosis; they're treating their water. It doesn't matter if it's coming off a limestone, you know, aquifer. If it's everything's coming out of science. a lake, everything's being done, and everything science. Plus, also in this situation, this could have literally been a blend of eight, nine, and ten year old bourbons, right? Whereas today it might have been a blend of six, seven, and eight, and that's all they're ever going to put is six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. So you're going to have way more consistent products, and that batch might have been ninety percent nine and ten year old barrels, and you know ten percent eight year old barrels. It's got some color to it. It does. I mean, it's not. It's not it's, crazy. It's not. No. It's not any better than the, the Kentucky Spirit, you know. Yeah. But 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 that's my point. Is like I think that they're. A lot more juice that you're drinking that's older stuff is aged differently. So, therefore, I think there's a much more different in consistency of what you know you're going to get because today everybody is so consistent. Um, and, and I'll get into this when we, we, we do our Christmas special, but age statements and, and how old bourbon is today versus what bourbon was in the 90s, 2000s, the early 2000s, the 80s, and earlier. It's just it's a totally different game today than what it was. So, in then. other words, back in the day, the master distiller actually had to do his job it's not only they had to do, it's not that they, not <laughs> only that they harder. had to do their job no it, it's more about the fact that like because not as many people were buying it they didn't have the pressure to release it earlier and they yeah. could let stuff age properly. so if you look, just let's just give a, a primary example austin nichols the original wild turkey 101s that they came out with that were those those straight batches from basically the um, what was it like? Early, late, mid to late eighties to the mid to late nineties. Uh, Austin Nichols started actually in the early seventies. Was it early seventies? Early, early the mid seventies. But almost all those were age stated at what yeah, eight years old? Eight years, but most of them were probably mixed, eight to ten, more closer than nine. Truthfully, yeah, right. But they did have some eight, so they had to do right. So, so in in today, when you get wild turkey on a one, it's six years old, six seven. That's it. Yeah, they try. It's a blend of six seven year old whiskey, but they, it's more scientific. No, no, I, I wouldn't say that. It was, I'd say, more, you know, pre the recent craziness in purchasing of, of bourbon over the past five years. I would say pre 2015, t- really. Right. But, I mean, no, I will say even up to 2018, 2019, is that there was such a backlog availability of very old, very aged bourbon that many of the, the uh, distillers. In groups were going through and now now that they've gone through a lot of that uh distillate that has aged for so long they are now getting to the point to where they're starting to use their, their younger stuff to get more out into the market sooner right then and they're holding and coveting the older age statement and to get more of a higher cost point right yep the, that and they're coming out with additional labels which we've talked about that in episode so episodes. so being thankful, I think we're all thankful for our families since uh, we were going to talk about thankfulness. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. We got <laughs> away from yeah. that, so uh, uh, you know, especially uh, uh, the people that have served in the military, their families supporting them from home, and obviously the wife or the husband having to take up with the 
the duties and responsibilities for raising the kids and all that while yep. the soldier or the airman or service person's deployed, that is something really special. And that's one thing I'm thankful for that, yep. you know, these people in the, the services have, have this support that's going on. Yep. And, and I'm thankful for our military. We're thankful for the guys that went over and, you know, they, they served our country and, and they gave up time with their families, right? Like that's, that's a huge importance. You know, the fact that, you know, that they, they go and do the things that not all of us want to do or would do to, you know, to give us those liberties and, and things that we have out there. So definitely I'm thankful very, for those. Very thankful to, we could do this on the uh, Marine Corps birthday today. Oh, oh yeah. Happy birthday. Which is United the oldest States Marine Corps. There you go. The Marine Corps. I didn't even know that. The halls of Montezuma yep. and the shores so of Tripoli. Triple e. 1775. <laughs> this day. They fight our country's battles. Actually, actually, you know 1970. who the oldest service is? It's the Marine Corps. It's National Guard. National Guard. Well, the hmm. Minutemen. The Minutemen. Uh, Marine Corps was founded in eight, or 1777. <laughs> the Jareds of the in world. In a bar. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, wait. You're giving him too much credit there. <laughs> Way too much credit. National Guard. The National Guard. Huh. I didn't know that. I didn't realize the, that. The citizen soldier is the older, oldest soldier in the United States. I'm right. very thankful that my dad said he bought the this rare breed from 2014 because he liked the bottle. There you go. There you wrong with that. Amen. It was like a, 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 one of his runs for one of his Bottle hasn't runs. changed much. No. Bottle's bottle's been pretty consistent over the years for rare breed. And you can't find that now, right? Well, not that old of one, but you can find rare breed all day, every day. Well, you can find modern ones. You can find these fairly common so yeah. you think the 14 the 2014 is similar to the rare breed that's coming so it's going right to be now? It, so yes so I, I will say that it has a very similar profile um i will say that it has a very similar taste those are going to be hotter and higher than the newer ones are but they're also younger so they haven't mellowed out as much so i i, I will say but the, like i said i will put that rare breed up against almost any premium bottle out there and if you blinded it you're yeah. going to have just as good of an experience with that bottle as you do any of the other ones. As a matter of so, fact, if you want to pour you a little bit of it, pour you some, and I, I, I don't, I don't think you'll go wrong. It's the one right so, in front of you. So with a wild turkey, what's their one. number one top end? So their top ends right now, I think would you would consider more of the Masters Keep Cup collection or the Russell's Thirteens. Like those are the ones that I think that they've put the premium price points on and things like that. Which the, that's what we're about to drink is the Russell's Thirteen. It's the fifth pour. But yeah. uh, those are kind of what I would consider what they've considered or deemed as their flagship of their bourbon products. Then you get some oddballs like the father son father and son yeah and the More diamond the, yeah the diamond right. but that's part of the master's keep series let's okay, be honest yeah, yeah, i mean yeah. it's all part that's of that you true. got the diamond the 17 year you've got uh you just had the 12 year 101 yeah the 12 year 101 which I, i'm trying to get a sample of that from somebody right now the cornerstone well, rye well, yeah. where did they get their water keep. from yeah. in lawrenceburg uh, i mean they're pulling those off of what a couple of lakes and then they're, yeah. they're, they also and they have get, an they got the kentucky river also and they have the kentucky river right so they're like buffalo trace yeah they and then they clean it out yeah yeah but but like I said, they're, they're they're all treating their water so heavily at this point to make sure that you know there's no because of the fact that the rivers have just been so much more polluted than what they were in the 70s and 60s and 50s. They they're doing a lot of tr- more treatment to their water. But see, it's a, doesn't it liken or or hold up like the beer because Coors is a is a very good beer. Um, and I think it's part of the artesian water that they use. Yeah, but once again, they're using artesian water that's been filtered. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, I mean, so yeah, that, I, I think that's the big caveat is the fact that that's why I think you get so much more of a consistent product today is A, it's 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 the age range, and then also the fact that everything is just so much more digitized, it's so much more ran, it's so much, you know, there's, there's so much more consistency in what they're doing today. So, I, so on the theme of thankfulness, who else is thankful for something besides me? Yeah. <laughs> Jared, my wife. Your wife, you better say that. Yeah, I was about to say. You, you just know, got married, didn't you? He Congratulations. did. Congratulations. Still my wife, but thank you. How many, <laughs> how many days has it been? <laughs> two weeks. Almost. <laughs> Not it's twice, almost two, two weeks. weeks. <laughs> Twelve days. Enjoy it. I can help him out. <laughs> about to say, so. I, I, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll give some thankfulness out. Because, you know, a lot of the, the, you know, I know that you guys have, uh, I've known Scott now for just about a year and a half now, and most of you guys, you know, more recently, but it's one of those things of like going, I, you know, built our bourbon bar, bourbon bunker, <laughs> whatever you want to call it for stuff like this to have, share, enjoy, have just a good time in relaxing, you know, whether it be conversations, funds, or, you know, my wife being passed out at some point in time on the floor. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Poor Barbara. <laughs> I, listen, I'm thankful for our families, right? I'm thankful for oh, my yeah. wife and the and, and the fact that she puts up with my shit. I'm I'm thankful for the fact that you know, like I said, for me, like. The, this whole bourbon thing has become a fellowship for me, right? It, it, it's about me getting out of the house, you know, whether it's every week or every two weeks and we come out, we sit down, we talk and we sip some bourbons, we bring in stuff. Everybody brings in a bottle of something unique for something to try. And, and for me that, that's just, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the fact that we, we all are all capable of doing that and we all make it, you know, and if, if somebody can make it great, if somebody can't make it great, we don't throw a big fit about it. You know, nobody gets their feelings hurt and we, we just have a good time with it, you know, and for me, I'm thankful for that fellowship. I'm, I'm thankful for, you know, my family and the, and the fact that my wife is, like I said, she tolerates me and she, she puts up with my shit, even though she probably shouldn't at times. <laughs> I think we're all thankful for our wives. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. I am, you know, consider she's not here. She's at a, a bourbon women's event, but I wouldn't be able to have, have this collection that I have right now if she didn't either want to participate with drinking it or have it. Yes. So, so I'm very <laughs> thankful that my wife is tolerant for the amount of bourbon that I own, even though she doesn't drink it or partake in it. <laughs> You're very lucky in the fact that your wife actually will partake in it with my you. wife will drink it. And I'm very lucky for that. Yeah. And so. it's nice that they give you all lotion for your shackles. <laughs> it's not so, what the lotion is so, for, all right? So, hey! <laughs> oh, that's not a good sound. We've um, lost some other stuff, though. I so, see someone has already drooled on their shirt. <laughs> sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. Whatever. Sure. So, but, I uh, think you were making out with your uh, new So wife. I've actually been married <laughs> the longest here. It's like the Big Daddy movie where the kid has the spit hanging from his mouth. Ah, Big Daddy with yeah. Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve. <laughs> Considering I've only been married seven years, so yeah. Well, I've been married, what, 26 years now? So oh, you got How me at 20. <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. That, that's 14 days. No, you know, <laughs> actually 12. It's actually right 12 days. 12? That's not even two weeks. <laughs> it was close enough. You know, it, it's, it's Dang, awesome. that's bad when you start adding days to it already. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, been that long, huh? This year, this year my uh, wife and I cracked open a Elijah Craig 18 because it's our 18th anniversary this year. That's good. That's good. So so I don't know what I'm going to do. So my wife and I, we actually started dating in 93. So we'll, we'll be together 30 years in September. We, our first date was September 11th of 1993, wow. which I laugh about the fact that, you know, because September 11th was always a special day for me. And then when when the tragedy <laughs> happened, it was one of those things that I was like, man, I, I really don't want this to ruin the fact that like literally my, my wife and I, our very first date was Steamboat Days, which okay. for, for those people that are from around here, they know what Steamboat Days is but we Joe Jeff. we had that uh that 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 experience and everything else but you know we got married you know a few years later in 96 and we've been together ever since but uh, definitely i'll tell you another thing i'm super grateful for and I, and I and i know tim's in the same ballpark and i know nick is too i don't know about everybody else but our kids like i mean i i have the best kids i really do i know you don't have any kids yet man i know yeah, you neither don't one have of us any. Have i know kids, neither yeah. one of you do and it's fine but that's my stuff so but dude I, like if somebody would have told me when I when when my wife actually finally talked me into having a kid because it was it was it was a negotiation or did she just get the, you drunk? No, <laughs> it, was, it was a negotiation. Trust me, I did, didn't matter how much alcohol she had, um, but it was one of those things that like, dude, like after having a kid and and, and once you do it, I, I'll I'll tell you, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way that it's the, it's an instant love that you will never ever be able to duplicate. There's just something about a kid and that instant bond that you have with them. And the, those that don't have kids, uh, I'll give you a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very grateful to uh, been able to have my grandparents around most of my life. And yeah, that's something everybody should be more grateful of. Their grandparents, the the ones that are older than us, and they've lived some uh, full lives and. They they have experience that we don't have well beyond our years, and that, that that's uh, something we should all be more grateful of for I'm sure. Very grateful for uh, my dad still being around because uh, he had four strokes this past year. So uh, him being around is very grateful for me. Yeah, you know, I you know I will say that I'm grateful because um, a couple of years ago my uh, grandfather passed away, and part as as part of the party gift was he gave all of his uh, their children and grandchildren some money you know, that, that was left over for the family. And I will say that will, that actually tied into me being able to get this house. It was able to do super improvements for my old house, sell it at a very high price. And then 
you ought to pick this thing up. You ought to pick this thing up. That's cool. So, so I think there's lots of things for you to be thankful of and, and grateful for. And, you know, that's what really, you know, talking turkey for me was all about. That's the reason we started it. And, you know, me and Josh, we talked about being, what we were being thankful for. And then we also got a little silly because we got drunk that night. <laughs> um, but, Great uh, podcast. I think if I remember correctly, the the the, the favorite phrase that the, out of that one came "gobble gobble bitches" from Josh <laughs> um, <laughs> at the end, which was always funny because Josh was like, "I don't even want people to know who I am. Do not talk about it." And then he joined the podcast. So yeah, he failed at that then. Yeah, he failed miserably, um, but it is what it is for sure. So so the last one we sipped on, which I've already drank mine, which to me I'm going to say it's my favorite. I've I've drank through all these and every time I drink this one it's just the Russell's 13. When I first tried it the funny thing is it was I I was not a big buy on it. Like I was one of those people that I just I don't get it. The juice isn't worth the squeeze, blah, blah, blah. But the more I've drank this bottle, the more I've enjoyed it. It's got so much complexity to it, the fruit and the caramel and everything else. But it, it, it's a, it's really a solid pour. What do you guys think on that 13? I like the 13. That's actually the second time I've had batch one or third time. I may have had it time before here. Yep. Um, for one that's sort of out there now and you can get, I love it if, if I could find it at retail, not the right. yeah, highly re- inflated. Re- re- not at the 350 to $400 bottle range. Yeah, I have yeah. to, I have to uh, be thankful for my uh, next-door neighbor, who was the former owner of the keg. Todd. He, he helped me acquire <laughs> that bottle himself. Now, uh, one thing I do want to say that I'm thankful for, and I imagine the guys around me will be as well, is for Scott. I appreciate you for everything that you do. I appreciate you guys. This. You know, you know, I met you randomly. By stealing a bottle from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not bitter about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is only the second podcast has been brought up in. It is. But, yes, I do. It is it's a, still delicious. It's over there. You can go try it. I'm sure he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. But, you know, I, I, I thankful for the time and effort you put in for these podcasts. Yeah. As, as this has grown immensely, and, you know, it has been very enjoyable for... Both me and my family, and Barbara, yep. for you being here. I appreciate that. You know, like I said, that, that to me, that's what bourbon's all about. It's all about the fellowship, you know. And and the funny thing is, you know, the first time I ran into Carl and we were up at Huber's and we were sitting around <laughs> talking, and it turned into a whole esca- escapade of weird things going on, <laughs> and we just had a good time and oh, yeah. talking to his family and his mom and dad and everybody else that was in there. I think Jared's family was in it there. Was Jared's family that was, oh, was there. Jared's family. Was yeah, okay. my my parents don't really drink bourbon anyway. Anymore. So, but just that whole aspect of you know the fellowship of talking through things and. And the funny thing was, like, they knew right away because you'd left that day. They're like, if Scott's going into a Rick house with Ted, <laughs> y'all just if follow. I, if I didn't have to go to that damn birthday party. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't feel bad. <laughs> he had to leave, too, for I wedding. Know. Yo, I had to go to a, my, my nephew's birthday party in Evansville. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sort of telling on Josh, but like he may, have been, he may have been the most smashed of all of us. Between <laughs> Josh and John, you got your options. Yeah. No, John, John was hit, but dude, Josh was uh, Josh, hurting. Josh was hurting. Josh had that thousand yard stare going on. Yeah, for sure. He, he was out there, but uh, God love him. But, uh, but yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, to me, that's what this is all about. It's all about the fellowship, and I appreciate the fact that you guys appreciate me. But it's it, it's really more about you guys. Like you know, you my house has been torn apart for the better part of you know eight or nine months, so I haven't really had anybody there because we've been doing construction project after project after project. God love my wife; she's putting up with that, but she's spending my money. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's technically not my money. It it's feels that way sometimes. Money. It's, it's her money. Our money. It's, it's her money. It's, you're right. You're right. <laughs> the collective. It's the collective. But anyway, long story That's a nice short. Way to look at it. It's. It, it, I feel like my house Jared's has been torn apart now learning this. Yes, Jared. Yes, it, I, Jared, let me teach you, you one valid lesson, Jared. If you, if I taught you anything at all, whatever is yours is hers. Whatever is hers is hers, and whatever you own collectively is hers. And then she will allow you to share some of those things with I her. I hear a chuckle back there oh, from yeah. LeBlanc. Oh, she, she, she's <laughs> nodding and laughing. So, uh, I own you. This is why I haven't gotten to drive her car very often, but she's driven my car multiple times. Yeah. I'm glad you still haven't learned how to use the mic, and then all this time um, you're talking all yeah, sideways were, into it. You realize it's we heard you. her car, and your car is her car. Right. Yeah. Let's get she, that correct. So the other thing you will learn too is no matter what, she will always have the nicer car because you will feel guilty about making sure that she has the safe, nice, neat, pretty new car and you get whatever hand me down or whatever the second. So technically is. his car is a little bit newer at the moment. Hell is it? no. Yeah. <laughs> She'll correct it. Yeah. <laughs> Give her some time. It, it's, it's called self correction. It'll happen over time. It will. 
<laughs> you're still new, man. You're still new. So anyway, so definitely appreciate that. So let, let's, uh, if nothing else, let's at least rank what we've drank today. Since we haven't did a full set of tasting notes on any of these bottles, <clears throat> which one stands out the most? Which one stands out the least? Can we put them in order? Yeah, absolutely. You can put okay. them in order. So one, I think, was the Kentucky Spirit was was one. The Master Keep um, was two. The 1992 was number oh. three. The 2014 was number four. And the Russell's Reserve was number five. So of saying those things, I, I'm going to stick with the, the most memorable for me is going to be the, the Russell's 13, even though probably the most unique is going to be the 1992, just because of that old Dusty and it's got different taste and things to that nature. Um, but I'll say probably to me, even though it's probably the most expensive bottle on the table, I'm going to say probably the master's keep is probably the least memorable for me as far as that stuff goes. But if I was going to rate them one to five, I, I would have a hard time deciphering between the rust, the rare breed 16 and the, in, in the Kentucky spirit. I guess for me, uh, I am a very toasted fan. I right. enjoy the, to- those toasted flavors. So, you know, Russell 13, the one, then I would go to the Rare Bead 91, 2014, and then Spirit Last. But that's just because I'm more of a toasted fan. I right. enjoy those toasted flavors yeah. in that. Nothing wrong with that. But I will say the unique one, though, is obviously that 92. Oh, that 92 Rare Bead. very unique. Very unique. I love it. <coughs> it was very unique. It's yeah. gone. <laughs> it, it's no more. Tim? So I'm way different than you all. I'm going to go for the, the 2014. Rate. Yeah, the 14's number one. Number two is the 91. 91, yeah. Then I'm going to go Toasted or the Wild Turkey 1. And then... It's the Kentucky Spirit. Kentucky Spirit. And believe it or not, the Russell's 13 was the... The least favorite for you. That's yes, sir. I'm not wrong with that. I'm, I'm actually probably going to go the 91. <laughs> Sorry about that, Scott. <laughs> Tim doesn't care. He just picks it up, throws down. Picks it up, throws down. Uh, probably the 2014, then the Russells, then the one, then the uh, Kentucky Spirit. Kentucky Spirit, yeah. And, and, and like I said, I, I could probably be swayed a little bit off the Spirit and, and the ones, but it's just... To uh, me, they're a little more interchangeable. Yeah, they are. They're Well, they're both 101. Yeah. They're both, you know, they're, they're both very similar. The toasted notes that come off that one is very good. Um, it just seems like to me the toasting takes, a, takes away a little bit of... What I would call a traditional turkey, which would be a more of that caramel flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I think that's why I went with the with the spirit, and it might be just because I'm a little selfish for that plus and, a straight turkey. And I like sharing with everybody. So what are we going to find at the local liquor stores? The local that's liquor, out here. The local liquor stores literally only Kentucky Spirit, Kentucky Spirit Rare Breed, yeah, and a regular um, Rare Breed, and then a regular Rare Breed, yeah. So those are the ones that you're going to find at I'm every good store. With that. Rare Breed Rye, you're going to find all day long out there. Um, 101, 101 rye, you're going to find. So, I mean, there's a lot of great wild turkey products that are out there that people can find all day long. It's just, uh, and like I said, I will put rare breed, regular rare breed on a, on a blind in almost any situation with the best of the best. And it, it, it will rein in with a lot of those big boys. Oh, for sure. I, and absolutely. most people just don't realize it. Oh, Graham Deb 114 is very similar. Like they're both two pours that, that are very, very cheap, very, very readily available, and they, they slap. They both come in where, you know, they, they hit with the big boys. Jared's someone's, over there. someone's over there shaking his head. You and Carl are like two peas in a pod. Why I is mean, that? Between Rare Breed and Old Granddad 114, you two both love the same things. I mean, yeah, he God. said he listened to the show a lot, like, so he, he might be slightly influenced. I'm looking at son over here. <laughs> hey, hey, remember, today is day 13. I was slightly 13. but my buddy <laughs> always had Old Granddad around. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. He's not over it. <laughs> so the funny podcast. thing is, so Jared, just to be funny and, and to kind of piggyback that, is the fact that, so Basil Hayden, Old Granddad 114, and and old granddad bottle and bond all the same, same mash bill, same everything, just different proofs. I cannot drink Basil Hayden. Basil cannot. Hayden is. Basil I hate Hayden it. Drink. I mean, if, if you're sick, drink Basil Hayden. It'll clear up your nose. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, do I, like the toasted Basil Hayden, but the I race. don't even like the toasted. Like the only Basil Hayden I've ever really enjoyed thoroughly was. I want to say it was like Ten the Caribbean dark rum, yeah, to, or the, the, the the rum. There's like some Caribbean rum one yeah, or something. That, it's a blue label. Yeah, it's yeah. a blue label. Mm-hmm. To me, that's the only one I've been able to drink, and I was like, oh, that's not bad. The, that's, the, the, the ten year is the one that I like the most. That ten year dark rye or ten year rye, something like that. I didn't even care for it. Now the thing, my my thing is, is that 
imagine if Babel, Basil Hayden decided to up their proofage to like say ninety two or ninety four. How do you think that that would end up? I, I think it would change it drastically. I mean, oh, just yeah. go to just the oh, Granddad bottled and bond the one hundreds way better than than Basil Hayden, way better. It's just crazy. I don't yeah. think they'll ever do it though. No, they won't. I no. did won't. No, I don't no. think they will either. Let's pass around the the the, the today's rare breed. We're going to do one last cheers on this, and then uh, oh, rare breed. Yeah. What, we're gonna, what number was this? That it wasn't a number. This is one we haven't tried yet. So oh, I'm going. So this will be number six. This will be number six. Six. That's a heavy pour. Sorry. Yeah. Dude, listen, <laughs> no, nobody cares. It's just rare breed. Like I said, yeah, we can I find can, it on the shelf. I can find another ball. Replace really that easily, all day long. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we give one more good cheers and salute. And this one's going to 91's not coming back anytime soon. <laughs> no. This will be something that Unless we can, can all be thankful something. for. You'll probably have to go to that place in Louisville to find that. Uh, Josh's or whatever. I don't neat. neat. I don't even know if they or Justin's Bourbon House Justin's, of Burton's. Yeah. I don't even know if they would have it. Because there's also one in Lexington, <laughs> yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. So one last thing. Cheers. I know I know we're all thankful As for they say in Dominican and salute. Repo. Salud. Salud, that's salud. right. So to our wives. Prost. Prost. Salud. <laughs> what is it? Lahaim. 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 All right. That's our episode of Burn Barrel Talk. Rare breed. Mm, it's always good. It always oh, yeah. hits right. Yes. Anyway, if you want to find us, Bourbon Barrel Talk is on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those social medias. You can find us on any of the music platforms that you listen to, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, whatever you like. You can find it. And if you can't find us on your favorite platform, let me know. I'll make sure I get us routed into that one. Anyway. This is, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is Scott, Tim, Nick, Jared, and Carl signing off. Peace out. Gobble, gobble. Gobble. Gobble, gobble, bitches.